Hello and welcome aboard the USS Slater. My name is Eric Rivette. I'm the education coordinator here for the museum and I'm going to show you around the ship today. Come on aboard. The USS Slater is a cannon class destroyer escort and if you've never been aboard a warship before, the first thing you need to understand about this ship is that this is about as small as they get. We'll fit inside a battleship about five times with room to spare. And the whole reason the USS Slater exists is at the beginning of World War II, we were fighting Germany. Uh, Germany was using submarines to sink our merchant ships. The only way we could win World War II was to get our troops and supplies across the Atlantic Ocean to England. Uh, Germany was threatening our ability to do that. And so what we needed was a new type of ship that we could build very quickly and very cheaply for the sole purpose of sailing back and forth across the Atlantic, escorting those convoys and finding and killing German submarines. The ship is 306 feet long. She's just about the length of a football field. At the widest point, she's 36 feet wide. So no matter how you look at it, this is a small ship. This compartment is the galley. This is the ship's kitchen. And again, the Slater had a crew of 215 men during wartime. This is where you did the cooking for all of those men. So as you can imagine, this was a very busy place. Uh, the Slater had about three cooks and two bakers. So those are five very busy guys. Uh, basically 24 hours a day, somebody would be in here making something. What you have to understand about this compartment is this is one of the most dangerous places on board. Uh, when you put the Slater on the ocean, she's going to do two things. She's always rocking side to side. Every time you hit a wave, you're going to ride up and crash back down. So the ship is in constant motion. With hot stove tops here, it's very easy to get burned very badly. So being a cook on the ship could be very tricky. All right, this is the forward end of the ship. It's called the bow or the forecastle. This is the ship's main gun. This is a three inch 50 caliber gun. Slater carries three of these on board. This is number one, number two is up above us, number three is on the other end of the ship. This is your main gun. So anything you want to shoot, this is what you're going to try to hit it with. So airplanes, ships, targets on land, you name it. Now the three inch gun had a couple of problems. Now, the main problem was that it was amazingly difficult to actually hit something with this gun because it took two men to aim it. The man who's on the right side of the mount was called the trainer. When the trainer turned his wheels, he turned the entire mount left and right. And right across from him is the pointer. Same story, the pointer goes up and down. And so it takes two men working together to hit anything with the gun. And the downside to this is again, your ship is in constant motion, side to side, up and down. And so your pointer and your trainer are constantly turning their wheels, trying to get the gun on target. It can be very difficult to do. And so what you'll do is you point all three guns at the same target, you fire all three guns at the same time, and you hope one of those shells hits something. And you do that again and again and again until you hit your target. Now this is what you're firing. This is a three inch round. Now, the whole thing is 25 pounds. The projectile is 13 pounds. The range on the gun is about six and a half miles, which means from this location, we could hit downtown Troy. Not too bad. Okay, this part of the ship's called officer country. This later had about 11 officers on board. This is where they live. As you can see, this is very nice. If this does not look very nice to you, just keep in mind you've not seen what the enlisted men get yet. Now here we are in the officer's wardroom. This is where your officers eat. Now, as you can see, not too bad. They have fine china, silverware. This looks like a very nice restaurant. Now, this is what the table looks like when the ship is in port, when it's not going anywhere. When the ship is at sea, you cannot set the table like this because when the ship rolls, you lose your entire meal. So when the ship is at sea, that's what the planks back there in the passageway are for. They're called fiddle boards. They fit on top of the table. One, two, three. All of your dishes fit into the holes that are cut into the planks. It keeps your plates on the table. It doesn't always keep your food in your plate, but it does keep the plate on the table. And then also all of the chairs were chained to the table legs. So if the ship takes a sudden roll or a sudden pitch, you stop here instead of going into the bulkhead. Because again, it can be a very bad ride on board the Slater. Now this table does have one more important use, and that's the light above it. And this is not decoration, this is also the ship's operating table. In an emergency, you clean off the table, turn on your lights, and you've immediately got an, a surgical unit. We're not big enough to raid an actual operating room on board the ship, so they had to use what space they had. Now this compartment is the enlisted crew's mess. You saw what the 11 officers got above us, this is what everybody else got. The Slater had about 180 enlisted men. This is where they eat. Uh, as you can see, they don't all fit at once, but you cram as many people here, here as you time, uh, at, at one time as you can, usually 50 or 60 men. Now, this is a steam table. It had steam running through it to keep the food warm while you're serving it. And it works basically just like a school cafeteria. Your enlisted men come through, get their tray. Officers had fine china. This is the enlisted man's china. They fill up your tray and you sit down to eat. Now the difference here is the officers had fiddle boards that kept their plates on the table. The enlisted men did not get fiddle boards. So what they do for you is they leave this space or this space empty. And when you sit down at the table, 
that's your fiddle board. Okay, if you're left-handed, that's your fiddle board. This is forward berthing. This is how your enlisted men sleep. Now, again, if you're an officer, you have one roommate. Down here, you have 32. You had 33 men who slept in this compartment. Most of the enlisted men were on the aft end of the ship. You had 150 men back there. This is the remainder of the crew here. Now, you can see bunks are stacked three high, one on top of the other. There's always been a debate about what the best bunk is. I'll tell you what I think. You didn't want the bottom bunk for several reasons. You have two men who are going to step on you every time they climb in and out of their rack. Underneath the bottom set of bunks, you've got the lockers. This one here I stocked to give you an idea what the enlisted men had on board the ship. But anytime somebody needs something out of their locker, this is what happens to the bottom rack. It has to get out of the way, which means you have to get out of the way. And the other problem is, remember, this is a very rough riding ship, and this is a very green crew. Most of the members of this crew had never been to sea before. Uh, Seasickness was a bad problem on these ships. You wanted the top bunk. You wanted to be above all of that. All right, now this compartment is the captain's cabin. As you can see, the captain has the exact same stuff as the other officers on board the ship. He has the same desk, he has the same bunk, so he doesn't really get special treatment. Uh, he does have slightly more room than the other officers, but there's only one thing in here that makes him special, and this is the gray door right here in the corner. Uh, this, of course, is the captain's head. He's the only member of the crew that has his own private bathroom. Now, the uniform hanging here is the uniform worn by our captain. This is Commander Blanc's uniform he wore on the ship during World War II. The pictures here on the desk is his wife and his daughter. Uh, he passed away several years ago. He left us a lot of his stuff that we could keep on board the ship. Now here we are in the ship's radio room. What happens in here is 24 hours a day, your ship is receiving Morse code, which is what you hear coming through the compartment. And the radio men, the guys who know the code, their job is to sit the typewriters and type down what they hear. Now they're not trying to type down every single message that comes through, there's too many of them. Uh, you're listening for certain specific messages. And the way this works is every ship in the Navy had a four letter call sign that works the exact same way as local radio stations have four letters today. The USS Slater was NZYF, and so what these men are listening for is NZYF repeated several times. That meant the next message that comes across is for this ship. Now what you have here is the ship's last line of defense. This is a 20 millimeter machine gun. It's the smallest gun we carry on board the Slater, but as you can see, it's still a pretty good sized gun. You have two guns per mount, and this is a heavy machine gun. That means it fires very fast. Each gun can fire about 460 shots a minute. That means this mount is putting almost a thousand bullets into the sky every 60 seconds. And now look around you. There's one here, there's one there, there's one over there, and one there. There's four mounts in the middle of the ship. There's three more mounts up forward, and there's two more mounts back aft. And so the Slater has got 20 millimeter guns all over the place. But you needed that many because the chances that this gunner is actually going to hit an airplane is very low. Now the range on this gun is about a mile. If you see the smokestack over there across the river, that's about how far the gun will fire. Now the guy that's going to do the firing, to give you an idea why it was so hard to hit an airplane with this gun, what he had to do was strap himself to the mount like this and then use his body weight to elevate the gun. And so you spend half of your time fighting the airplane and the rest of the time fighting the mount just trying to aim the gun. This is Frank Slater. This is who the USS Slater is named for. These ships were generally named for men who had been killed in action. Frank Slater was killed in November of 1942. He served on a ship called the San Francisco, which was a heavy cruiser. In November of 1942, a Japanese plane attacked his ship. He and the gunners with him all opened fire on the plane. They hit it several times and shot the plane down, but the plane came down on top of their gun mounts. They were all killed in the crash. There were 11 men killed in total. All 11 of those men had destroyer escorts named after them. All right, Insight, thank you for coming aboard the USS Slater. I hope you enjoyed your tour, and I hope you can come down and see us sometime when we're open. Have a good day.